Hello and welcome to the third video about the procedural planet asset for Unity and in this video we'll be looking more about planet customization and overriding properties of planets. Let's create a random planet in the scene and let's select a new planet and if you look in the inspector here uh, there's a whole range of properties that you can change and override. This particular planet is forced, it was forced to use the blueprint Dark Rock and you can delete overrides. The, these, the overrides are marked in yellow and it's got these little X buttons here to remove them. And we can force this one to be a fully random planet. And if you just base it on this random seed value, the random engine just picked that it should be a dust planet and that all of these parameters here, all the properties are configured according to the dust blueprint within certain ranges. For example, you can see that the biomes are forced to be dust here. And that's because the blueprint said that you can only, for a dust planet, you can only have dust materials. And uh, let's just click the random button here for the planet seed. This is a terrestrial planet. And uh, let's zoom out from this one, the camera. Here we go. And the nature of the random spawning and using the seeds here is what uh, one of the ideas behind this procedural planet as is, is that you should be able to just control everything if you wish by seeded values. Uh, if I copy this, let's start a notepad. I'll copy this value here, this random seed. If I were to click here on random again, and let's just get a few different planets going here. There's a Mars-like planet. Dark rock, there's a dust planet, a desert planet. It, remember this number that I copied away to the this seed number. If I paste this one, you'll recognize that that was the exact same planet that we were looking at before. <clears throat> and the idea behind this is that if you create a virtual universe and create planets from scripts, uh, you could just provide them with different seed numbers. And as long as those seed numbers are identical and the configuration of the manager is identical, on all platforms, the planets should always look the same. For example, you could store these seed numbers in a database online uh, for it to retrieve, and uh, you could have uh, multiple stars uh, with just different seed values for the planets. You don't need to store any textures, you don't need to store anything like that. Just keep the seed values and the planets will look the same if you were to return to that very planet. So saying this, that maybe there are a few things on a seeded planet that you want to change anyway. So if you want to create maybe not everything from total random, but you want to have more control of your planets, that's when we come into parameter overriding. And for this one, for example, we see that the maybe the clouds were too much and maybe we want a little bit less water on it or more water. There's hardly any water on it. And we can change these by, uh, first of all, let's have a look at the clouds here. You can see that if we start to reduce these cloud layers, you'll have less clouds coming through on the planet. Layer two. So layer one, two, three is just different layers of clouds uh, with slightly different look and feels to them, just so you have more control over them. Maybe some clouds, one layer is usually a bit hazy or like foggy and the other one might have more streaky clouds and the third one might have more, I don't know, spotty clouds. <laughs> There's also some layers on some of the textures here. Let's change to number three. I think there are some, for example, uh, some hurricane-like textures. So this allows you to override and change parameters. So if there was something on the planet that you weren't happy with, you can always go in and override it here. So for now, let's revert most of these back a little bit, but let's just reduce that really prominent layer two and layer one, and then increase the overall coverage a little bit. So maybe like that. And then the other thing we might want to do on this planet is change the liquid level then. And by using the slider, uh, we can just increase so there's uh, a lot more water on this planet. And by, by doing this, we are overriding the random value that was chosen for this planet. I'm going to take you through a detailed tour about all the parameters in a different video. That will take a little bit too long now. Uh, so I should also mention that uh, the ones that have an, a little asterisk next to them, or a star here, uh, those have more performance impact to change because that requires rebuilding some of the procedural textures. And also... Uh, the ones without a star here, that's just purely done in the GPU, in the shader. So those are a lot faster to animate. You could even animate these in real time. 
for example, if you had a planet that you wanted to override the liquid level, you could actually have the, the entire uh, oceans vaporize in real time on a planet if you wanted to. So again, if there's a little star here, you need to be a little bit more careful because that means that you might not be able to update on every frame. As you can see, this one cloud coverage is quite an expensive one to change. So that you probably don't want to animate that in real time because uh, unless you have much lower quality textures. When you override parameters here and you start customizing a planet, let's change as well here. We can change from desert, for example. Let's, oh, let's keep that a desert, but let's change this one to rainforest instead. You'll also have biomes have quite a lot of per, uh, customization possibilities. You can change this, increase the saturation of the forest layer. The composition dictates how much uh, desert and how much forest it should be. So if you select this balance slider here, you can set override. For example, you wanted more forests on this planet. And if you think that the uh, um, maybe the contrast needs to be greater between these lines, you can change the contrast shader. Sorry, the contrast property. And you can change how often the composition uh, map should tile. And you can also select a different composition map altogether. Just because this is a terrestrial planet doesn't mean it has to use the, the terrestrial composition map. We could go for a, the fractured map here, for example. Let's make this a bit bigger. And if we change the tiling here. Or maybe we want to, here again, if we do the, the slider, you get the point. Let's change the saturation a little bit again. Maybe you want it really dark instead. So, again, I'll go through these in a later video in detail. When you've come up with a configuration that you like, um, if you were to spawn this planet just based on the random seed, it would look like it did before and not like what it looks like now because we're overriding these values. And there's a number of ways you can you can do this. Either you could save this planet as a prefab. Let's just make a temporary folder here. temp and let's drag this procedural planet into there let's rename it my first planet and this one will uh, it doesn't allow editing in the inspector if it's not instantiated so the prefabs you will have to move into a scene to be able to see all the uh, properties so you could drag this one in in other scenes for example if you wanted to recreate this planet other ways you can do it, if you want to instantiate this from a script, you want to export this, use this uh, to the planet tools here to export to clipboard. So if I click on this one, it'll actually take the configuration string and put it into your clipboard. And if I paste that string here, it contains all the values that we've set for this, all the properties that were set. Uh, it'll say what category it is, that it's a solid planet, and it'll say which blueprint was chosen, or which one is used, rather. And it'll contain all the parameters. Even though we overrid only a few of them, it will always include all the parameters, all the properties when you export them. And this is because if at some point the random seed changes because you add a blueprint, for example, or maybe you, uh, you change the, the nature of the blueprints a little bit, that's why all the properties are always included anyway, because then basically if the blueprint looks different, it'll just override those values. So you get the same looking planet rather than having those that you didn't override have a, a different value. You always want the plants to look the same then. As you can see here, liquid level, for example, is overridden and we have the cloud layer one, two and coverage overridden. So since I exported this here, I can again copy this into my clipboard, control C, I'm pressing. Let's just change this to a new random planet and let's remove this. We can also reset overrides to ensure that when we click it, it resets all the overrides. And if I click on this one now, import from clipboard, it will take this that I copied before and it'll import it from the clipboard. And as you can see, it'll, it'll detect even though these values were stored 
in the string as well. It detects that it's the same value that it is getting when it's randomly seeded, so it won't override this. It, since it's the same as the random value, it'll just keep it random still. Whereas the ones that were exported that we did override, they're showing up here as overridden. You can use the export and import. Maybe you want to back up uh, planets and keep them in a text editor. So if you find a planet that you really like and you don't want to keep saving the prefabs or screenshots, you could save the configuration of them in different text files just as a repository. Maybe you could name it uh, my favorite terrestrial planet <laughs> or something. Another thing you can do with these is uh, you could also have planets that you create and maybe put them on a URL in a database so that your game client, if you're making a game, would uh, query uh, like a, a web URL and obtain planets that way. That's one way to do it. Or you could keep text files on disk and uh, basically configure a whole bunch of planets and just store them as text files and then uh, spawn them using those uh, strings instead. Finally, you can also use these strings to create them from a script. So if you want to instantiate a planet using pure scripting, you can actually do that via the procedural planet manager by calling the method called create planet. And I'll go through that one uh, in the scripting tutorial, in the scripting video later on. For, I should say though that when you do that, you probably want to export one of these different formats, probably this one, the base64 JSON. If we look at this one, basically it's the exact same content here. But the, as you can see here, it contains a lot of indentation, which takes up a little space, and it's got some special characters like the quotation marks. And that doesn't really fare well if you're going to copy it into, uh, into a script file as a text string, because it'll break the, uh, the string by using the quotes here. So the JSON string, if I paste that one here instead, it just encodes it into random. It looks like random, but it's not. <laughs> uh, but it encodes it into a, a string safe format, basically. And it's also slightly smaller because it doesn't need to contain all the indentation formatting. It makes less uh, readability, so it's not good if you want to see what the parameter values are. You could always restore this one back if you... Let's go to a... Here, for example, if we go to a base 64 to text. We can just copy this one here and decode it. And as you can see, it's all the parameters are in here. So there's no encryption or anything like that. It's just a way to encode it into a, a format that's more safe to store in databases, more safe to copy and paste and keep in scripts. And again, if I copy this into the clipboard and import it here, let's do a random one again here. If I click the import here, it'll detect that it was in the JSON format and do the same as before. And the final one I should mention here is the escaped JSON. And that's if you want to maintain readability well, at least you see the values and the names, but it replaces uh, for storage in a database or again, copy and pasting in strings. It won't contain the quotation marks. It'll replace this. So it's safe to copy and paste it into scripts without breaking the formatting. Finally, for the customization is uh, this uh, variant. Uh, it's actually an additional to the seed. So if you have a planet, a terrestrial planet that you, you like quite a lot, but you want a slight variation of that one, you can click the random variant and it'll basically make smaller changes to the planet than a fully new blown terrestrial seed. So it'll make different continents, shorelines, the composition map will be slightly different. So if you want a whole bunch of planets that look quite similar to one another, but just different random continents, then you can use uh, different variants as well. So that concludes uh, this video about planet customization. If you want to look at the properties more in detail, you can go to the documentation and you have two two ways to do it first you can look in the manual and see the section here where it says about all the properties so it goes through them where they are and just roughly what they do and you also have this one so this one is more in a table form so it'll show what the property inspector la label is so that's the ones that we just looked what type of property it is whether it's a color float or a material and the camel case used within the scripting world so this is the string that you would submit to change the continent complexity. It doesn't have uh, spaces with a small uh, letter in the beginning and then capitalized every word. Something else to keep in mind here is that uh, it'll give you uh, an idea of what the minimum and maximum value is and uh, it, whether it's a shader feature or if it's a procedural texture rebuild requirement. 
if you see that it says yes here in the shader feature, that means that you can probably animate this one in real time fairly well. So continent size, for example, or liquid level, uh, you can animate those because they're taking place in the GPU, in the graphics card, in the shader, and th they're done more or less real time all the time anyway. So you might as well animate them if you want to. Whereas it says here on a procedural texture rebuild, uh, if you change these, if you override these parameters, alienization, for example, or the continent complexity, that means that it needs to rebuild or re yeah, recreate the texture map. And that's a, a CPU task that's quite heavy. It does that while the game is running anyway, so it won't interrupt anything. You can It does it in the background. But it's important to know that if you wanted to real-time animate it, you'd have to have a low resolution on the planet to be able to do that. So you probably want to stay away from real-time animating anything that requires a texture rebuild, even though it's possible, technically. And then finally, each parameter is, or each property is described here, just in a brief description. But again, I'll talk about these in uh, in a later on video. I'll put a link below so you can go straight to that if you want to see me walking through all of these nearly 100 parameters and pulling the slider and <laughs> showing what they do. If you're going to create blueprints in the future, you probably want to have a good idea of what these do and what the minimum and maximum values should be for a certain type of blueprint. So it could be useful to watch that video. Finally, I'll also show the, uh, so for this planet, the liquid level, atmosphere. What we didn't see in this video so far is the lava and uh, also city lights. So if we uh, increase this population here, you can see that the planet is being populated with night lights. So just wanted to mention those as well. But other than that, let's uh, take that in the in-depth video of all the properties. So in the next video, I'll be talking more about the blueprints and how to create them. Thanks for watching.